Storyteller Dr. Stephen Ella Williams Sr. here to tell the greatest story ever told how God became man so that you can become like God. Welcome. Changes things, yes, changes things. 
When you tried to say it, that he wouldn't make it through So he cut a family in to give them the bad news But the family say no, we ain't gonna let him go Cause we believe in God, we believe in miracles So the family join hands and they began to pray And call on the name that's above every name Just a few Later, the doctor came running in. He said, I got good, good news. Come around, he's gonna leave. Prayer, oh, prayer, oh, 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 oh. prayer. It changes things. I know that prayer, prayer, it changes things. Yes, it changes things. Do, 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 much prayer. Much power, no prayer, no power. Get in a hurry to get on your knees and pray. God will deliver. It changes things, it changes things, it changes things. Oh, it changes things, it changes things, it changes things.
prayer. The very idea seems audacious, revolutionary, full of wonder and mystery. An invitation to speak to God, to seek, to knock. Like a little child climbing into father's arms, prayer is an intimate and personal experience. It's about opening your heart to a loving God, a good father, the one who truly knows you and truly loves you. Prayer is trusting him with your worries and fears, your hopes and dreams, your needs and desires. It's about carrying all life's burdens, big and small, before the throne of God and resting in the limitless peace of His extravagant grace. So pray without ceasing. Pray for each other as you would pray for yourself and praise Him for His faithfulness because there is power in prayer. Just couldn't take life anymore. My problems had me bound, depression weighed me down, but God held me close so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me. So I wouldn't let go I almost gave up I was right at the edge of a breakthrough But couldn't see it The devil really had me But Jesus came and grabbed me And he helped me close So I wouldn't let go God's mercy kept me So I wouldn't let go Is won. 
Very soon you win the victory When then you face the lions for worshiping the Lord, it seems there was no hope at all for what would be in store. But when we stand on holy ground, our smallest prayer is heard. Instead of on our circumstance, our eyes are open. And your prayers may seem in vain They don't seem to make a difference They don't seem to make a change Just rest assured God knows your need And He hears each time you pray Your prayers are reaching heaven And the answer's on the way Good morning, saints. This is my prayer today, and I am your digital storyteller, Stephen L. Williams Sr., here to tell the greatest story ever told, how God became man so that you can become like God. And I want to say welcome to all those of you who have joined us this morning from around the globe, all from our websites from uh, the Global House of Hope web, uh, stream and live television, from YouTube TV, uh, from all our social media sites and our websites, I am glad that you are here. Uh, Brother Frederick McLean over there on Facebook and those of you who are on my personal page, welcome. Those of you who are on Stephen L. Williams uh, Sr., the Internet Evangelist page on Facebook. Welcome. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining with us. Those of you on our YouTube channel, the Shiloh SDA Church YouTube channel, I see you. And by the way, those of you on our My Prayer Today YouTube channel, God bless you as well. Uh, Nyclot Shaw, good morning. Calvin Williams Coombs, Jeffrey Aqua, and Deborah Delois, good morning. And it's Silvera. Good morning, Jenny Thorne. Good morning, Patricia Johnson. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining with us this morning. Joan Wallace, Norma Dodd, Barbara Hayes. Good morning. Good to see you all. Sister Cardinal Parker. Good morning, Sister Parker. Tell Brother Parker I haven't seen him in church in two weeks. I'd love to see him tomorrow. Amen. Good to see you. Uh, Nightclot Shaw, blessings. Uh, uh, Janet Dukes, blessings. Annette Silvera, Norma Dodd, Nita Maddox, blessings. Nita Maddox says, I'm asking for prayer, uh, for power, strength, and energy to do what God wants me to do. And she's praying for war-torn countries. We'll remember your prayer request this morning, Sister Nita. 
says the Ganeda Famas. Ah, that, that's my, my uh, cruising friend, Sister Ganeda. It's good to see you. Welcome back. I hope your cruise went phenomenal. I'm sure you had a great time, as you usually do. Uh, good, good to have you. Take me and Opa with you next time you go. Sister Cynthia Godfrey, good morning. Blessings on you. Yvonne Gail Madden, good morning. Kenya Cofield, good morning. Brother and Sister Wilson, good morning. Glennis Smith, good morning and welcome. So good to have you, Pastor Young. Blessings on you. Happy Preparation Day to you, my sister. And then, uh, who else? I, Norma Dodd, I mentioned earlier. Nita Maddox, I mentioned earlier. Uh, who else do I see down here? Rose Hay. Good morning, my sister. Glad to have you. God bless you this morning. Shirley Smiley. Good morning. Nothing better than Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Sister Spence. Good morning to you and uh, Brother Spence. Uh, Norma Dodd. Good morning. Sister Laurel. Anderson, well, that's Sister Spence. Blessings on you, Janet, I've noticed. Uh, good to see you. Praise the Lord. Who else do we see down here? Delmarie Robinson. Blessings on you, my darling wife, Opal. Uh, thank you for joining. Joan Wallace, thank you for joining. Pray on. Yes, Sister Williams. Sister uh, Carolyn Williams Coombs, that is. That's what God says. Charmaine, hey, the sisters are here this morning. Good to see you, Charmaine. Bless you. And uh, God keep you today through this day. Atha Renee, good morning. So excited that you all are joining us. I feel like playing some good music today. Isn't the music awesome to encourage you and to affirm you and to remind you that God is good? Well, let's talk to the Lord. I'm going to tell him all our troubles. We're going to tell him all our pain. We're going to, the song says, you got to tell him all that pleases you. You got to tell him what annoys. Because I'm happy to report, uh, Brother McLean, uh, down there in Durham, uh, North Carolina, I believe that is. Uh, God, God is willing to listen. God is willing to listen. So let's, let's tell him our troubles. Father, we come to you this morning. No other help. We know if you will not our refuge be, Lord, where shall we go? We come from the east and west, the north and the south. We come bringing our needs, our cares, and we also bring our thanks. You're a good God. You've blessed us. You've kept us. You've seen us through the night. You woke us up this morning. Thank you. You've put people in our lives who love us, affirm us, encourage us. Thank you. You've given us food and clothing and shelter and fresh air and beautiful sunshine. We say thank you. You've been an awesome, awesome God, and we thank you. As we start this day, Lord, we start it with you, asking that you will bless every single person person online. You know us all. You know all the intricate details of our lives. See to it, Lord. Some of us needs your healing touch. Some of us need a financial break. Some of us, Lord, are, are, are homeless. We need, we're looking for a place to live. Uh, some of us, Lord, uh, needs a touch on our families, on our relationships, some of us are aching and hurting for our children. We've got incarcerated loved ones. Remember them. We've got sick loved ones. Remember them. We've got broken people who need to be healed and affirmed. Lord, remember them. Remember Sister Nita this morning and her request. Remember Brother Parker continue to heal and restore him. Remember Brother and Sister Spence continue to heal and restore them. Remember Sister Claretta. Abel's continued to heal and restore her. Remember, Lord, Sister Cheryl Campbell and her daughter, Jessica, continue to heal and restore them. I pray, Holy Father, that you will continue to remember those living in war-torn countries, living under the threat of storms, storms and tornadoes and hurricanes and wildfires and mass shootings and political chaos. Remember your children over there in the Middle East and what's going on in Europe, in parts of Africa. Oh God, 
Put your hand of protection about your children and keep them in this crazy world where the devil is wrecking havoc. Remember your church today, Shiloh and all the churches represented this morning. Remember the men and women of God who preach and teach your gospel. Lord, each of us here today, we are connected to some spiritual institution, some church where there is a man or a woman leading, trying to draw us into close relationship with God. Bless every church to which we are connected around the globe. Bless our preachers, Lord, connected to these churches. Bless our attempt to push the kingdom of God. Remember my colleagues here in New England. Remember our president, Dr. Jules, and our secretary, Dr. King, and and, and uh, remember our treasurer. Lord, I pray today that you remember uh, Pastor Stirrup over there at Faith and my friend Robert Madden down there at Charity and um, uh, my, my, my colleague Willie Wright over at Hope and Medina up here in Springfield. As we evangelize this community this summer, Lord, give us a great, great reward in souls. May we see many come to know Jesus and to give their hearts to him. Then, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you will bless our spouses. Each of us, Lord, are called to ministry. I pray that you will use us to your glory. Forgive us of our sins, Lord and uh, touch each person online. Then, Lord, use this ministry to glorify your name, because what a beautiful name it is. Thank you, for, Lord, for loving us and for being here today in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You are the world at the beginning One with God, the Lord Most High Your hidden glory in creation Now reveals in you all Christ What a beautiful what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, and nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name.
holy God, so powerful God, yeah, death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave, the heavens are roaring, the praise What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. So we're walking through this uh, 16th chapter of the book of John, a book written that we might know Jesus. And John spends uh, the first uh, 14 chapters telling us about Jesus. But then since chapter 14, Jesus is doing the talking himself. He's pouring into his disciples what he needs them to know for the last days. He is giving us exactly what we need in order to survive. Yesterday, we got to the point where Jesus said, uh, well, you're going to experience grief, but then praise God, joy, your grief is going to turn to joy in the morning. The world would rejoice at first, but then, praise God, God's going to do something for you. Now, Jesus continues that thought in verse uh, 21. That's what we pick up today. Verse 21 of this um, 16th chapter of the book of John. And it goes slow from, from here, folks, in this chapter. Uh, you know, we've got to think uh, another 12 verses to go. But, but every verse is power packed. It is pregnant with power to affirm and encourage us. So for the next 10 days, we're, we're probably going through one verse a day. So, so look at this. Look at this verse. Look at this verse. The Bible says this. The Bible says this. Uh, let me put it on the screen for you. A woman, this is Jesus talking now, a woman, when she is in labor, uh, Jesus, he goes there uh, to talk about 
a pregnant sister. Now, you need to know a woman in labor is a happy woman. She's an excited woman because she knows God is about to bless her with child. And Jesus uses this analogy. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. Interesting comment. So the time comes for her baby to be delivered. And Jesus says she has sorrow. What makes her sorrowful? Now, mind you, this is not a sad event, the birth of a child. But she is sorrowful because she is in pain. They tell me there is no pain like that of a woman in labor. Never been there. Opal, I would have to ask Opal about it to come give her testimony. Uh, but, 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 but Jesus says that she is in sorrow because her hour has come, because the child is about to be born. But, he continues, as soon as she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. She no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. You know, um, this, this verse is so pregnant with information, and that's a good word to use here, pregnant. You said the woman is in labor because she's about to bring life into the world. Jesus is about to go die on the cross. And that death on the cross, Charlene, is the experience of being in labor. And he was about to mourn and cry out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was going through this time of pain, of labor, but Jesus knew that after that time of labor, you and I would experience a rebirth. Praise God. And folks who were once destined for death would suddenly be destined for life. And you and I who were lost would suddenly be found. And you and I who were heading to hell would suddenly be on our way to heaven. Jesus says, yes, sir, but as soon as the, she has given birth, to the child. She no longer remembers the anguish. So Jesus suffered a great pain, but Jesus no longer remembers the anguish for the joy of knowing that you and I have found salvation and you and I are no longer lost. Praise God. He opened the door between earth and heaven so that you and I who had no hope, suddenly we find hope. And so Jesus is excited about what is going to happen on Sunday morning, not, not for himself. Jesus is not excited for himself. Jesus knows who he is. He knows he's going to lay down his life, Sister Deborah, and pick it up again. He knows that. He knows what he's capable of. But Jesus, Sister uh, Patricia, uh, wait, Jesus is, is excited about us because suddenly, praise God, we who were dead in our sins are now made alive. And so I'm going to leave this verse with you again. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because she knows her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. She no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born, in, uh, born into the world. I need you to know uh, this morning that the God we serve is a way maker. 
and that he has made a way for you and I. And because he has made a way for you and I, we can be happy today. And so as you walk through this day, my prayer today is you will know that you can be excited about life because Jesus has birthed you into the world. He has birthed you into everlasting life. Praise God. He's a way maker. Lord, thank you so much for your word and the reminder that you have provided a way for us. Lord, help us to grasp that way, grab on to that way, to hold on to you and to enjoy the blessings of life. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Folks, thank you for joining with us. And by the way, join me tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Our service starts at 930 with Sabbath school. But at 11 o'clock, I've got a word from the Lord. I've got a word from the Lord. And uh, this is lessons from an ancient prophet. It's going to be inspired. The Holy Ghost is going to appear. You want to be a part of it. If, you, if you're not in church on tomorrow, and it, it's good, go to your church if you can. But, but if, you're, if you're anywhere in the vicinity of Springfield, Massachusetts, get there tomorrow. You're going to experience the power of God. Or join us online um, as we talk about lessons from an ancient prophet. I'm going to be looking at, at the prophet Ezekiel and what God was doing in his life. Now, enjoy uh, my sister singing now, Waymaker, Waymaker. Stay by. I'm going to play a few songs before we close out today. Uh, but God bless you. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> In the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
Right. 